Okay. First, first order of business, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Well, the FedEx guy had to ring the doorbell, so okay. You gotta yell it's at clearly him. his fault. <laughs> I think the dog knows when the recording starts. Yes. All right. Let's let's go. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, welcome everybody to the Hyperledger Technical Steering Com Steering Committee meeting. Everybody's welcome to participate. This and the rest of our open source activities. Uh, so long as you abide by the antitrust policy that you see there, and by our community code of conduct, as to be polite to everybody else who's contributing. Uh, we've got a few announcements to kick off, and then we will try to wend our way through some of the pipeline decisions, even though Arnaud is not able to join us today. And then I think we've got a late breaking quarterly update that uh, some of you may or may not have been able to take a look at. Uh, so pretty light day, especially in comparison to knocking through three projects last week. So uh, maybe we can uh, do the uh, the big reveal then from uh, Rye. Oh, okay, Dokley. So the, the results are in. Here is the TSC for 1919. Uh, sorry, 2019 to 2020. Uh, congratulations to everyone that uh, was elected and those that were reelected. Uh, you know, uh, thank you for continuing your service and uh, to the new people, uh, welcome aboard. And to those from the current TSC who did not get reelected, uh, thank you very much for your service. And I turn the floor over to uh, Dan. Yeah, uh, it feels like probably a few words are in order there. Um, it's nice to see that we've got some new talent joining the team. I'm certainly uh, at, at something of a loss for, for how to deal with the talent that won't be continuing with us. Um, <clears throat> we had some discussion on the mail threads uh, leading into the election that we didn't really have time to deal with formally about expanding the TSE. Um, I'm hoping that we can continue that dialogue now and uh, maybe some of the talent that isn't immediately listed to join us uh, would be again available uh, should we have a, a mechanism to expand the TSC so that we've got um, more and uh, some yeah. additional diversity there. <clears throat> yeah, I, 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 I agree. I mean, I'm, so I, I, I tend to fully concur that it's uh, a shame that we're losing some valuable voices. Um, I am pleased though with the, the newfound diversity that we have, uh, both from a sort of uh, company perspective as well as uh, um, uh, both Tracy and Swetha being able to join. I think that's great. Um, wish we could have more. I think, um, <clears throat> You know, I brought this up the last time that, you know, I thought we should think about, you know, the potential that we might expand the TSC. And I guess there's a couple of different, you know, ways that we could go about that. We could try and lobby for a charter change and hold a special election or, you know, maybe we could do something that's not necessarily requiring a charter change like uh, I think uh, we previously talked about maybe having some sort of like at large TSC membership that the TSC could select that's um, there's there's number of precedents for open source architecture or you know steering you know committee boards doing that kind of thing like the uh, CNCF and OpenStack did the same thing where they had sort of at large seats um, uh, that expanded their um, respective, I think it was the, the technical oversight board and the CNCF. And um, so maybe we might want to think about uh, that. I, I don't know if we need, um, you know, Salona or I don't know if Brian is on, I don't see him. Um, uh, you know, some sort of a, a blessing from, uh, you know, from Mike Dolan or somebody, you know, from a legal perspective, can we do that, right, without something specifically in the charter or, um, 
so it may need that kind of a review, but I'd certainly be supportive of expanding, uh, you know, from 11 to, I don't know, you know, maybe add four or six. Yeah. I, I had some reservations before about expanding just because it can be difficult for us to make forward progress with a smaller number of people. Uh, but uh, as I'm now faced with the consequence of not expanding it, it, it does seem more, uh, I don't know, palpable. Um, so, yeah, I think expanding it by a relatively conservative number like four or six might be a good way to continue to retain some of the talent that we have volunteering. Yeah. Absolutely. So I would ask the, uh, I guess the new TSC um, to consider uh, how they want to do that operationally. Uh, this, this election took uh, quite a bit of work and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we basically would want to rerun that election or uh, if we want to uh, like revote with the, the previous uh, people who were standing or I would just ask that the new TSC think very carefully operationally about how they want to do that. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. I think we need to have, um, you know, somebody, you know, maybe Andy or, or Mike Dolan or somebody just give us a, a read on, you know, what the art of the possible is here. Could we have the TSC vote in at large members without modifying the charter? If we can do that, then that might be the most expedient and simplest way to go about doing that. And then we could have maybe a closed session. We could have some discussion, propose some names, come up with whatever the number is and, and be done with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, I just don't know if that's legal, right? right? Right. You know, per the charter and stuff. Right, right, right. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to show you because I, I, one of the pieces, sorry. One of the pieces of feedback that I got from Brian is that he doesn't want to make the elections into a leaderboard. Um, so with that in mind, I'm not going to share my screen, um, but uh, Concordant, Condorcet, sorry, has the ability to show what the election would have been if you had set the winning choices to 16 or something like that, right? So you can play with the election results to see what it would have been. Um, that, that is easy to do, um, but uh, I don't want to, I don't want to reveal those results because you can also uh, cherry pick kind of who wins, right? We can, exp we can expand the TSC until we had like, <clears throat> until <clears throat> the people that you guys wanted to be on there was on there, right? And I don't really, I don't feel that that's fair. Um, so if you wanted to come up with another way to do that, like from the previous election results, pick the top 16 or the top 14 instead of the top 11. That is super trivial to do, but I don't know that that's fair necessarily to the people who voted in the last election. So it's, it, it is an option, but you know, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe what we could ask then of the in coming TSC is to take a look at the uh, references that um, that Chris just mentioned CNCF and uh, uh, what was the other one Chris well anyway the, the other one that he mentioned that, that had done at large voting and uh, just get a feel for what what precedent is out there uh, um, also think about what a reasonable size is to work with. My bias is smaller is, is easier to work with. And uh, we can pick that up as one of the, the first matters in the, the next week. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think it should be up to the new TSC. Uh, Although you could make an argument that the outgoing TSC has less bias, but it's not actually the case. It's overlapping. So, right. Um, I mean, I, I, 
I'm, I'm kind of warming up to the thought of having the TSC actually choose from amongst the, the membership, although we could have another nomination, you know, stage and just make it a vote of the TSC members um, mm -hmm. so that it's not as complicated and doesn't put too much of an onus. I mean, it could just be a, a you know, like I said, a closed session, you know, where we have discussion and, and voting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if there's more to be said about that. Well, the, the charter is pretty clear. It says the board shall consist of, um, the TSC shall consist of 11 elected contributors or maintainers. Right. So I think- It doesn't say you can't have more though. It just says it shall have well, 11, I mean, elected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could appoint as many. I mean, you could have. That's why I'm saying I, I think we need to get Andy up to grow over Mike Dolan or somebody, you know, from LF legal or the, you know, the external counsel to give us advice on what we can do. If we can't do it, we can't do it. That's pretty clear. And if we need to modify the charter, that'll take some doing, right? We have to go appeal to Brian and the board, get that through and then hold another election or something. But, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I'm, like I said, I, I'm fully with Dan that, you know, it's unfortunate that we're losing some, some key voices in the community that were on the TSC previously. I, I don't know that we're losing the voices. This is, this is an open call, right? They're, it is. It they've is. lost the ability to vote, but yeah. the voices are still there. They want to be. And, you know, we, we, I, I kind of don't get it, right? I mean, we didn't have this type of heartburn the last couple of years where people who didn't make the cut, you know, we spent the, the entire meeting, you know, talking about how sad we are that they're gone. Right. I mean, we have new voices, you know, that were just elected. Right. All right. Well, uh, I think we've, we've sort of run the course of the conversation for now, but, uh, uh, like I said, UTSC ideally picks this up next week. And if we can get some feedback from uh, LF Legal on the options, that will help inform that conversation ahead of time. So uh, whipping through the remaining announcements, um, about a month out, we've got the Maintainers Summit in Minneapolis. Um, it occurs to me that if we're going to... Uh, pick that up with uh, the people who are organizing that. But uh, at any rate, make sure that uh, uh, the maintainers for each of your respective projects, for those of you that are on the call, are aware of and uh, trying to attend that. And then the following week, uh, we've got a boot camp in Moscow. And uh, I don't know how long the visa process is, but uh, it's usually longer than you would think. So if you need a visa to get to Moscow and you want to go, you're probably better off doing that as soon as possible. Hey, Dan. And Nat, yeah. With regards to the Maintainer Summit, um, besides having people register, I think it's also important to get uh, additional agenda topic ideas, add it to the, the agenda link. So... Uh, if anybody on the call has anything that uh, that we should bring into this, definitely add that to the agenda link. Yeah, uh, all in all, help with planning for that. It's just another community-driven activity here. There's not a uh, like a lot of staff behind the the planning of this event. So maintainers, if you can put topics on the board that you want to talk about, there's there's a page to do that on the event link. And then um, that also includes anything that you want to do for that you think would make a good team building activity. Uh, I'm sure the, the folks that are in Minneapolis can offer up local suggestions, but it's not just limited to those people. So I'm sure that there's a lot of team building things that are available independent of city. Also, um, Sloan here on the boot camp Russia thing, a lot of times it's just easier to get a tourist visa than to get a business visa. We can see about getting the letters for the business visa, but uh, the scuttlebutt was from them was basically a tourist visa is a better way to go. Uh, 
Okay. All right, well, uh, moving into the pipeline discussion items, it looks like Arnaud may have joined us on the call after all. Arnaud, are you in a position where you can uh, help lead the conversation there? Uh, take silence as a no, but you can uh, interrupt me if you do. I'm become, guessing you may just be listening and on a plane, yeah. not able to talk. Right. Doesn't want to give away that he's got his uh, phone on <laughs> non airplane mode. Get tackled by the TSA. Okay. Um, so if we do go ahead though and, and go into the, uh, the uh, project life cycle, I don't know why I called it pipeline. Sorry. So the project lifecycle, uh, the link will take you to the right place anyway, if you click the pipeline link. We have closed several of the issues. There are two more that uh, Arno indicated are not terribly controversial that we might be able to close on. And then uh, a sixth, the item number six, that is the, the third remaining one that might require a little more discussion. Uh, so the first one that we've got is the criteria for a first major release. And this starts to fall into the camp of what is the Hyperledger way, uh, kind of following our, our discussion last week about, you know, continuing to expand the kind of projects that we have, or the redundancy of projects that we have. Uh, if we're going to still have a technical brand, so to speak, for Hyperledger, you know, what is, what is the Hyperledger way? And so having some level of uh, uh, quality uh, to a first major release is important to that. I haven't previewed this, so I don't know. It looks like the last updates were August 28th, maybe. So, so not a ton has happened in the last week or so. Does anybody have any comments on how complete this is at this point? I, I was just going to suggest, why don't we just wait for our note to be available and discuss it then? I mean, you know, bring up the people should review it and get their opinions, you know, noted, but. Yeah, so we don't have to take it to a vote today, I guess. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, we may as well use some of our available time here to discuss issues. If people have things that they believe are still open on this draft resolution too. Hey, uh, hi guys, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I'm in a taxi, so bear with me. <laughs> but uh, if the connection is good enough, well, I can uh, briefly try to describe what this is about. I mean, I think it's fairly non-controversial. The issue had to do with, you know, what does it take for a project to qualify for first major release, given that there's quite a bit of churn involved, uh, including, you know, from the, the, the Linux Foundation, uh, the staff has to get involved, do the security uh, review, and then there's quite a bit of PR and all sorts of things related to first major release. So this issue tries to define some criteria that can be used objectively. I mean, some of them may not be seen as super precise, but I think it's still a step forward from where we are today where we basically have no criteria whatsoever. And so I tried to, there were some comments and then there was, you know, I made some updates and I haven't seen any further comments. So I got the feeling that, okay, this is act actually probably acceptable. And so I would be happy for the TSC to agree to this new, you know, definition of what it takes. And of course, as always, if, you know, down the line, we find that there is some imprecision or something is missing or doesn't work we can always fix it right so so how to one of the things that's missing how do we feel about some level of quality 
as a requirement. Um, you know, we are supposed to be doing enterprise level work. Yeah. One of the criteria that we had for the fabric first release was to have the set of JIRAs triaged and reviewed and that there should be no high, uh, uh, you know, JIRAs that um, uh, remain in, uh, you know, for the, for the release, right? They had to be medium or low. Um, and, um, and certainly no security defects. Um, so, I mean, again, I, I mean, I think some of this is somewhat subjective, right? Because you're, you know, you know, people can sort of, you know, fudge that a little bit, but, um, uh, you know, certainly the intention there was to ensure that, <clears throat> um, you know, we weren't putting out something that had significant known issues at the time of the release. That doesn't mean that there aren't going to be some that are uncovered, but, you know, certainly from whatever testing is done, there shouldn't be any major defects. Yeah, I mean, even in terms of the goal, right, there's some text, I don't have the text in front of me right now, but it's something about, you know, you, you've achieved the stated goal by the project. And of course, this is kind of wishy-washy in some respects. Sure. So, yeah. I mean, back to Mark's point, it's true that, you know, it's very hard to judge the quality of the project, right, so the software. But, you know, I think that's something we have to live with until somebody, you know, comes out and say, wait, this project sucks. I'm sorry. You can't make that a major reason. <laughs> I don't know that we would be in position to really make the call. It doesn't all software suck. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I did find the text in there. It's in part five of resolution. Two. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it, right. The same thing with, you know, documentation, right? There's never enough documentation. Exactly. <laughs> Right. Exactly. Hey, How do you make hey, that? I wanted to jump in here. This is Dave Hughesby. Um, looking at these, I just wanted to state that items one, two, and three, and six are all like on-off kinds of things. They're light switches. These are easy to measure, easy to know when they're completed, and that it's really numbers four and five that would demand the advice and consent of the TSC, right? Does that make sense to everybody? Because like one, two, and three are just obvious. Yeah. Like, Although it should say a license easy. scan was completed and all issues, you know, re <laughs> mitigated, right? That's that's correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is correct. Well, we can make that amendment to the text. Uh, yeah. I think I think we should because yeah. just finishing the scan doesn't. <laughs> Yeah, and it does reveal a whole bunch of things we've ignored. That's right. yes. <laughs> that is true. That's a lot of I's and T's Very true. to take care of. No, but there is something else about the, the the issues that it says that the maintainers are comfortable with the issues or something. I forget the text now, but so there is another piece that talks about issues. There is no major issues open or something like that. Maintenance yeah. of so, remaining open bugs and agree on severity priority. Exactly. So I think with the two of them coupled, but we can clarify the, yeah. the uh, you know, make it explicit on the scan. Yeah. So I just updated that. So it's explicit now. It says and all issues were resolved. Thank you. I think that's good. And I'm also going to update it to also say or exemption has been granted by the legal committee. Yeah, that's good. I, Tracy. I like that. Yeah, I took that as a kind of resolution. <laughs> um, a question about the, the first major release. Did, did that get decoupled from necessarily being 1.00? I, I see there's a comment from Sean in part of that about trying to adhere to Semver. Um, are we still expecting 1.0 to be the first major release? Uh, 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 it it is, depends it on... Uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, sorry. No, 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 it's okay, Chris. I mean, it is indeed not specified in there. And <laughs> to me, it's kind of by design. I didn't want to get into that. Yeah, I mean, if you, yeah, I if you brought a project in and it was already at some version number, even if you renamed it, you may want to, you know, 
But, so, um, I mean, an example with this is for, for, with Go, um, as people move over to modules, I mean, there is actually some leeway with the first two major releases, and so maybe it's compatible, but you, you start to break some of the ecosystem tooling if you, um, if you, if you can't go. Like, so we're, we're, for example, on Borrow, we're making, we're making breaking changes on minor releases, and we sort of say, meh, it's okay, but um, it's a little awkward. But, but you have a first release, though, right? Silas? Sorry, sorry, I just lost my mute button. Um, uh, we have uh, we don't have a one point zero. Oh, we're on zero oh. point. No, no, we're, we're like zero point two. So what oh, we've done so, is, but I think for zero it doesn't matter, right? Uh, yeah, possibly for zero and I, I have and, to go back and read December text again. But I think for zero you can have breaking changes. Um, oh yeah, no, so under December yeah, you can. Under, under under the Go module system, we ought to be pushing out are breaking changes onto a version one and a version two. Okay. So the, the new go.mod stuff. Yeah, so this, this phrasing doesn't prevent any of that. I think it's, we specifically called it first major release because we knew that some projects might come in with, with versioning metadata already set at something higher and making them rewind that could cause things to break. The main thing is, here's your first big announcement that you're going to make through Hyperledger. You're going to be applying the Hyperledger brand. Is your project of a suitable quality that it should get to do that? So how I'm going to be interpreting this too for the subjective things is when a project comes and says we're ready, um, that project should know that we're going to go take a look at these items and we're going to give them feedback. So it is totally subjective to say whether or not the documentation is sufficient, but you know, it, I think that if people are going know that, that it's going to be inspected, they're going to hopefully think about it a little bit more if, if they weren't already caring about that. So I'm satisfied that there's nothing that is too onerous on here and that we've got enough flexibility to account for tool projects as well as framework style projects. I had a question for Dave. Um, and excuse my ignorance, but I'm assuming the security scan looks for CVEs and things like that as well. Yes, that is true. Okay. So uh, the security scan is when we hire an outside security firm to do code review and network fuzz testing and you know vulnerability analysis and they focus heavily on the interface between code and underlying crypto code because that's where a lot of bugs come from. So if you want to talk more about that at length with me, I can go through all the criteria, but it's, it's pretty extensive. And all you have to do is look at the uh, technical reports that are published underneath our security scans to see the level of what um, our auditing firms go through. All right, cool, thank you. Any other uh, clarifications needed or should we uh, move forward with a vote here? Um, hey, I had one last thing to say about the question of it being 1.0 or not. Um, Bezu is doing a 1.3 release in September and we're already like I was talking to them yesterday about doing a security audit for it as their first major release as part of Hyperledger. So I just want to throw that out to the TSC to, to kind of rationalize about this. I, I think it's not necessarily 1.0, but it's like the way I've been thinking about it is the first major cycle of applying the Hyperledger way. Yeah, but there to, are past 1.0 and right. Yes. I think we have to be somewhat careful about this because one of the criteria is active, right? And Ooh, yeah, you're right. CII and all that kind of stuff uh, still applies. And yes, a security audit typically is done beforehand. Right. It's going to take a month or so, right? Even if we can get it, their attention. Yeah, it takes so, a couple months. Up, Aaron. I'm with yeah. Basu. We did a security audit about a year ago with Trail of Bits, so we have had one. We just haven't had one in the past year. 
Yeah, well, we did we did two with Fabric, and we still did one through Hyperledger. Okay, right. An cool. independent audit, right, is still a requirement. Yeah, I, I think, think for, for your, I, I didn't mean to derail this. Go ahead, Troy. Uh, yeah, a security audit. Um, what's, what's the scope of the security audit? I mean, a project has some projects have frameworks like the the DLP, along with uh, various clients or SDKs. Um, thinking about the Ares project, which doesn't necessarily have a DLT backing it, it's more peer-to-peer -peer clients. Um, I was just kind of curious how the scope of the security audit might look based on these different variations of projects. Uh, I don't want to derail the conversation. Can we take this offline, Troy? Um, yeah, sure. I, no I, I'd happily go into all of it. it. The short answer is it depends on the goal of each project. So you're right, fabrics are tested, or like DLT platforms are tested differently than say libraries. Uh, a question on the uh, criteria. It, was it not the case at some point that we had the TST approved for some major releases? Um, certainly with fabric, we, we did. Right, we brought all the evidence to the table and to Mother May I kind of thing. Yeah, I thought we had added that at some point, um, maybe I don't know, last year was it? Uh, I just don't, I don't see it here. Maybe I'm missing it. Yeah, I don't know if we oh. added it formally to the process or not. I know that for the 1.0 release, though, that we did go through a review and. Are you saying that in what we've got written here, we're lacking the yes, the thing that the TSC will actually vote to approve it? Yes. Yes, we are missing that. Uh, well, I'm happy to fold that into it, but technically, it's a different issue that is related. Uh, this is issue is about. The criteria for first major release, how you use those criteria, whether it is used with it, you know, for a TSC vote or not, is somewhat orthogonal. I think we did have a documented on the life cycle process, Tracy. I think it's that what, That's uh, what I'm wondering too. Yeah, uh, it was. So it does different say that um, they do have to seek the approval of the TSC. Uh, this is where the lack of consolidated, uh, you know, decisions by the TSC is hurting us. It'd be nice to have a record easy to search for that. Because I agree, I think that decision was made sometime in the past when we realized, okay, those first major releases implies quite a bit of expense, you know, and mm -hmm. we shouldn't do that lightly. So, but I don't know. I cannot point to a resolution. So, well, yeah, but uh, what Salona just reminded us of is that it's actually listed on the lifecycle page. So, if you go to the existing lifecycle, it does say that the TSC has to vote. Oh, great. So, so I think right. we are we are covered there. I was viewing this as what needs to be done before the TSC considers it. Yeah. Yes. That and, makes sense. And we had a problem in that we were all having when we were doing the voting and the approval process, we didn't have clear definitions for um, our, for the TSC, much less for the incoming projects. So that I thought was the inspiration of this is to sit there and to be able to take some of the stuff in the project life cycle and make it better defined. It might just be worth noting that in this, right, if we're going to approve this, that um, it, this is what needs to occur before the TSC will vote. Hey, Arno, can I propose one slight change to issue two? Can I restructure this so that the technical objectives, the, the on off ones are regrouped at the bottom here under sure. the, the, the project has met all technical objectives and that includes CII best practices, uh, the badge, right? Um, the security audit with all of its sub items. So that's number two and the license scan number three 
plus the release code notes are available. Does everybody agree with that? Because these are all just like a tick list of technical objectives that are straight. Yeah, uh, that's totally fine. I mean, it's editorial in nature and it makes the document easier to use. It's fine with me. Yeah, the only reason I put release notes at the end was that's sort of the last, one of the last things you do. Right, so I'm not gonna change that order, Dan. I'll just, I'll just group all these technical things at the very bottom mm -hmm. and update the document. Okay, because I think that makes things clear because then <coughs> items one, two, and three would be like all of the subjective stuff that requires some interaction with the TSA. Updating now. So if you can reload now, you can see my changes. Okay. Does that look good to everybody? Maybe technical object objectives for the release technical criteria for the release. Okay, and then um... Oh, sorry, I was on mute. Sorry, Dan. Um, so one other thing that I just thought of that's not actually here, it's not just release notes, but a change log. Oh, I'll add that, Chris. Yeah. To the bottom here. Um, Typically, the release, the release notes are pros notes. and the change log is all the commits, right? So. All right, change log is uh, captured also, Chris. Okay, and then I added a line at the top saying that, you know, before you bring this for a vote, you should have fulfilled that stuff. All right, well, I move that we go ahead and take a vote on this. Hey, Dan, can I ask a point of order? Sure. Uh, existing TSC or new TSC? Um, existing. Okay. Uh, we confusingly somewhat decided that this was still an existing TSC meeting, uh, either before, during, or after the last meeting. No worries. <laughs> right, so the, there was a little bit of an off by one error there and uh, that communication was unclear, and that's uh, probably on me, but the, uh, the, the, the new TSC doesn't exist yet because they haven't elected a chair, et cetera, and uh, the thought was it would be a little bit rude to have the election in last night at 5 Pacific and then ask the new TSC to be seated and voting and stuff at uh, 7 a.m. Pacific the next day, so the new TSC starts next week, not this week as previously announced. Well, the new TSC starts at the end of this meeting, right? <laughs> uh, All right. <laughs> to be clear. <clears throat> well, uh, sure. And the the election for the chair starts. 
As far as this vote, though, do we have a, a, someone willing to second that motion? I'm just reading what's written now. Oh, I'll, I'll do the seconding. Um, this will be my last chance to second. My second. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give up hope, Silas. Yeah, I, I also haven't voted no for anything. So can I can I second and vote no? I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I don't think uh, there's anything blocking that. Vote when recorded. Second, when you second <laughs> it, it just means that, you know, you want to bring it to a vote. So you want to hurry up and kill something, you can do that. All right. So uh, we've had a motion and a second. So uh, let's just do this by voice. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right, draft resolution two is accepted. And we've got one more that we might be able to knock out here. Um, waiting for my page to refresh here. Yeah, so there's a related issue, which is, okay, and then what? <laughs> what about the next major release? And so there's a very short proposal to basically say the same criteria applies, plus the fact that, uh, if I remember correctly, SEMVAR needs to be respected. And I forget there is another one. There is one technical issue here that the TSC has never addressed, which is do we redo security audits for every first major release? Or sorry, not first major, for every follow-on major release. Now, up until this point, the answer has been yes, or the, uh, the assumption has been yes. A um, couple projects have been audited twice, right? Fabric specifically has been audited twice, once at 1.0, once again at 2.0, but also included the 1.4.x uh, long-term stability release. And I wanted to bring this up because there, this has significant consequences to the Hyperledger budget because these aren't cheap. Um, and absent of any clarification from the TSC, I erred on the side of caution and said yes. But this is the chance to set the policy going forward. I agree with the way that you erred. I wouldn't even call it an error. I think most major corporations for enterprise class software do security audits for every release, right? The, the TSC is going to vote on the first major release, we haven't said anything like this or anything after that. So there may be more that needs to be settled on that front. Well, this is why it would need to be brought to the TSC and discussed because the TSC is going to have to, you know, decide are we going to commit marketing and auditing and all that kind of stuff. Is it ready for a next major release, right? Imagine a project that does a 1.0 and then wants to do another 1.1 and asks to be a next major release with all the big push and everything. The TSC might say, well, it's not really a next major release, right? I guess I'm interpreting major here to mean a major version number in a SEMVR context. So it's, it's sort of a, a weird initial state when we've got a, a project that's at like 2.7. It's their first major release with Hyperledger that, you know, it's coming in at a strange version number. But everything after that uh, should follow some verb for this process. And that's the way that the resolution is written. I agree. I guess if we're considering Bezu again, like... Is it now expected that Bezu approach the TSC um, for their 1.3 release and ask basically for permission to be considered a first major release or you know a major release and get all that and what that all entails? 
Short answer, yes, uh, though this issue three is sort of independent of that. This would be more for they've they've gotten through that 1.3 and now they want to do a 2.0. Do they have gotcha. to do that over again? Right. Yeah, you're right. And what happens if 2.0 follows quick on the heels of 1.3, right? Yeah, so we, we could definitely run into some sort of budgeting problem where if somebody wanted to do a major release every month, that would just be weird and problematic. But you know, we can probably deal with that when we come to it. I'm sure that the TSC wouldn't want to vote every month on the same project doing a major release. I mean, I so, think that that's not actually completely facetious as a point because, I mean, some some software does do a rapid release cycle. If we are saying that in this in this secondary point, the the major does refer to major semver. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, that that might happen. Yeah, sure, I we bridge that when we come to it. Does this get the TSC into you know policing the the application of Semver? Like, was that really a breaking change, or was that really right? I mean, because that kind of uh, I don't think that's really tenable for the TSC to be you know, policing everyone's version numbers carefully, right? Yeah, and it's well, also it's something though that's that's just subjective when it comes down to it. So it, it's a problem if, if people are trying to do a major release with press announcements on a monthly cadence and the TSC should shut that down because that would be appropriate. And otherwise I don't see the need to try to um, put in formal language one way or the other on that. It's good for that reason, if nothing else. Whether the TSE actually gets in dirty into figuring out whether this is true or not, that's a different question. Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I, I kind of agree with Dan's sentiment. I don't think we necessarily need legislation for this. It's just, we, we definitely don't want to discourage people from doing a major release when they have a breaking change by giving it this like external semantic meaning. Um, but as long as we can communicate that in a way that the people realize that you know, they, they won't necessarily have to jump through hoops and it doesn't have to be a big press release every time they bump the, the major number, then that's fine. So I, if we were done with this part of the discussion, I had something a little more tangential dealing with versioning. Um, and it came up when we were talking about Bezu, how Bezu is coming in and they're at like 1.3 or something already. Um, and so in general, most of the time a pro company product follows the upstream versioning number. And I'm wondering if the tail is wagging the dog here. If, if the TSC needs to be concerned about that or not. And I'm just bringing it up for discussion. I don't feel strongly one way or the other, but do we need, you know, typically, you know, the upstream goes first and then a product comes out shortly thereafter. Do other people have thoughts on that? I'm not following you actually. Well, so when Bezu comes in, right, are we taking, are they going out at whatever their product version is when they do their first Hyperledger release? Right? I mean, I work for an upstream first company, so maybe it's different, but, you know, everything Red Hat does goes upstream first, so. You know, we'll put kernel changes in and they won't show up in our kernel for I, I, I don't months. think there is an upstream for Pantheon. I think it's just Pantheon will just become, but Bezu. it sounds like you have in mind a, a downstream product version of, of a repackaging of, of Bezu. I wasn't aware of that. Well, their upstream version will be Bezu, right? Right. So, yeah, so we're going to let them keep their existing versioning number just because it is a pain to go backwards with versioning numbers because it can break different kinds of build systems. 
but from the point that they became a hyperledger project, they are the upstream Bezu um, Ethereum client. And so if uh, the if there's companies that are contributing to Bezu but also releasing their own products, whatever product versions they release are, you know, that's up to them. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> right now we're at one four three with Fabric, although I think the product from IBM is 2.0 uh, and using 1.4.2, I think. But um, they're, they're not necessarily connected. Okay, like I said, it was so, kind of gentle. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, but I, I do think the basic case should be put aside and this question of, you know, should the first major release be always 1.0 or can it be something else should be discussed independently. I, I do feel like it should be 1.0 at least uh, by default and, and then we can look at specific cases if it really causes headaches and breakage, we might release that. But it's independent of the issue that we have in front of us. So I, I, you know, I would like to move to close the issue that we're facing uh, about the next major release, and then we can spend more time and maybe raise a different issue, as I was saying earlier, as to what should be the first major release. Okay, is there a second for the motion to vote on issue number three, draft resolution three? I'll second. Wait, where is the draft resolution for three? On the wiki. Um, <laughs> Thanks. No, uh, Thank it's you. in the same. I just, it's in yeah. the same. Sorry, it's in the same. Place yeah, I know that. I was, I was looking for it on the screen. <laughs> Go hit your back button and then go back. Uh, and yeah, sorry, <laughs> I'm never really sure how fast I should. I don't want to give people whiplash when I'm clicking around because I have like four other browsers mm -hmm. open, so I don't want to like click or click or click and, and make you guys seasick or anything. So here you go. So it's been seconded. If it hasn't, I'll second it. Yes, yeah, I second it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I just, I was looking for the text to read. I was like, wait. <clears throat> all right. Uh, voice vote. Uh, all in favor? Yeah. Aye. 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 Sure. Aye. I mean, aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstaining? All right, motion passes. All right, we've got about three and a half minutes left during which we could hit the uh, issue six or just kind of, uh, I guess there was some other discussion on the version numbering. Well, maybe we should continue on the version numbering if people are interested. Because the other issue that is left, you know, there's a, there are several related questions, but they all relate to the question of subprojects, which I think remains highly controversial. <laughs> so, I you know, I would invite people to look at the week again and then start digging into the different questions. And I honestly haven't made much effort to try to, you know, consolidate the input that has been. But then so far, I uh, promise to do that uh, as soon as I have a chance. And especially now that we have closed the others. Yeah, well, we definitely don't have time to talk about it in depth. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, issue six next time. And if anybody has anything important to say on version numbers, go ahead and hit that now. You just said the bar pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much I care about the version. Oh, wow. I don't know. <laughs>
So I, I wanted to, I, just since we're out of time, uh, and there was a question uh, from Vipin, I wanted to show you, this is the interface that you see if you're a, uh, a manager in GitHub of a project. So uh, this is the, the result of an automated security scan. So there are, uh, the question was, can we do something uh, cheaper, right? And like we have, all the projects have this in GitHub. And you can look and you'll see some of the projects have a very long list here and some don't. So we, we are actually doing that. Um, in addition to the security scans that Dave is doing. And also, I also want to throw in here, Vipin, that the CICD effort has pretty significant um, implications for quote unquote cheaper security, right? Um, we can do all kinds of automated things if we can settle on a CICD solution for all the projects and start pushing them in that direction. So that, that has always been my dream is to get all of our projects on an airtight, you know, reproducible builds um, kind of system where we have a whole bunch of security checks imbued into that. You got to get some more exciting dreams, Dave. Uh, I just lack imagination, honestly. That's really what it is. <laughs> All right. Well, we're at about time here. Um, so I, I think I already said nice things about everybody uh, last meeting and at the beginning of the meeting, but uh, it doesn't hurt uh, one more time to say thanks for uh, all the time that, that uh, the outgoing TSC members have put on this. And I know a lot of you will continue to participate in one form or another. Uh, like we talked about at the beginning, this is an open community and we regularly hear from everybody whether they are uh, TSC members or not. So thanks again. Yes, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. <coughs> Ciao. <laughs> Dog had to get the last word in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.